All right, like I say, we still on Dunamis, I guess for the rest of the year. Dunamis is what? Who can tell me? We've been on Dunamis since January. They said, catch me off guard. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's the power of the presence, the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. Dude, that's the, you can't get no higher power than that. So what we're studying this year is how we act and walk with the spirit of God on the inside of us. Are we quenching the spirit? Are we walking in a way that is glorifying him? Or are we walking in a way that may be, you know, against him, abomination to him? Are we doing things that we ain't supposed to be doing? Like, um... Like, yeah, we're going to get into the scriptures. I think we got 10 scriptures, but I'm going to think I'm going to take James. book. Y'all know I ain't had my man in a while, so I kind of miss him. So we're going to go through James 3, all the scriptures, because we ain't got but a few. James, the book of James, he tell it like it is. But our first scripture, the only one, well, we got two in the New Old Testament. It's Psalms 141 and 3. So while everybody getting that, somebody pray us in. We don't want to forget God. Yes, Jesus. Father God, we just thank and praise you once again for blessing us all to come together in your mighty name. Lord, we just give you glory, honor, and praise for your word is of it all. Lord, we thank you for blessing us all through this day and through this very moment, oh God. We thank you for Pastor Bear blessing her, making her, he is blessing her, he is faithful. Thank you, Jesus. And Lord, we just continue to ask your blessings upon her and her household in the name of Jesus. Bless each and every one that is here, oh God. Bless those that may come down or want to come down. Bless them, oh God. Touch their mind. Give them a mind to want to come down. Put them in your word. In the name of Jesus. Oh God, we just thank you for this Bible study. We ask for spirit to reach and launch and understanding of your word. Open up our understanding to your word, oh God. And dear God, we just thank you for this for your word. For your word is life, strength. Your word is all in all. You is your word. And we thank you, O oh God. We give you glory, honor, and praise in all things in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen, amen. Lord, feed your people. Father, you know my body is tired, but my spirit is willing. Lord, open up this word so that it edifies and glorifies you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. So, like I say, we've been talking about dunamis, love, the power of God, the Holy Spirit. So, today we're going to focus on the mouth. How your mouth edifies God or corrupts God. We all know that scripture that life and death is in the power of the tongue. We really didn't have to get that scripture. Everybody know that one. So we can cause blessings in our life or we can speak cursings in our life. It's all depend on where our mindset. That's what we were talking about in a group today at the mental health. We're doing a whole month of mindsets. You know, you have different mindsets. You got your financial mindset. You got your emotional mindset. All your mindsets is rooted in the culture that you were raised up in. So how your parents did things, you tend to do it until you start thinking outside the box and say, why am I doing this? I'm going to try to do something different. Like we always talk about the turkey, how we used to cut the turkey up and put it in the pan. But now we ain't got to cut no turkey. You cut a turkey up now, my kids be looking like, Mama, what you doing? That's good meat there. <laughs> they don't want me cutting nothing up. Put the whole thing in the pan. <laughs> we don't want to miss nothing. Right. Right. So we're, we're looking at our mouth. Do you know God spoke everything into existence? He didn't use a shovel. He didn't use a rake. He didn't do any of that. The spirit of God spoke everything into existence and we are made in the image of him. So anything that we speak, we speak it into our existence. I got a testimony on that. Y'all know that um, I was talking about, you know, I got to do something different because of what happened at my job and all this kind of stuff, you know, got to make ends meet and stuff like that. Um, I was speaking that I got to go here. I got to do this. And I know the spirit was here. Because I walked in and, and uh, my employer asked me, did I want to be direct supervisor? And I had to sign the paper. So I'm stuck. After I heard that and signed the paper, I heard clank, clank. 
I can't go nowhere. So I'm stuck. You know, when you walk with people, sometimes that's what it takes. Now, a lot of people, you know, would have thrown their hands up or whatever. But this is a gentleman that is giving his all in all in it. I can't do nothing but support because he's giving his all. I mean, his whole everything is on the line. So who am I? You know, he, I mean, he got a few more zeros behind his stuff, but you know, and I ain't got really nowhere to go right now anyway. So why not walk and help an individual? Walk, I mean, you get into it, what you just get into stuff when people giving you something, when it's all good, when they got your, your hand out, but when they ain't got nothing and they going through hard times, you walk away from them. I was talking to a couple the other day, you know, one of my clients, I say, you know, we always talk about that for better or for worse, but we never look at the for worse part. I have, uh, they newly married and the husband is dealing with being a par paraplegic. And who would have thought, you know, when you take those vows, you know, the, a vow is your bond. Your word is your bond. We in scripture now. So your word is your bond. And if you go and you, you say those vows, you can't say, oh, I changed my mind because this don't look right. This, I didn't, I didn't want this. I didn't expect this. So whatever comes out of our mouth, we got to be held accountable for it because it's going to be, life going to hold us accountable. God is the word. I know we're going to get to that scripture. So that's why I always say you got to say what you mean and mean what you say. So if I'm saying stuff to people and they're not receiving me, I'm wasting time. I'm not going to keep saying stuff to them. I'm going to do what I got to do. You know, you keep saying stuff, beating your head up against the wall, people not listening. You wasting your time. You got to go do something. And then when they realize what you were saying was true, they know how to come to you. They know how to say, oh, well, okay. You know, that's what you always got to have a window of forgiveness. Open your heart to forgiveness because people ain't going to receive you the first time always. Sometimes they got to go through something and then come back. All right, I'm going to get off my soapbox. Yeah, we talking about the mouth today. I told you I can preach this one. So um, Psalms 141 and 3, who got that one? Go ahead. Set a watch, O Lord, before my mouth. Keep the door of my lips. That's it. Set a watch, O Lord, before my mouth. That means we got to watch what we say. Watch everything. We got to take inventory of what comes out of our mouth. You know, ain't no oops. Because once it's out your mouth, you can't take it back. You can try to cover it up all you want to. But the word is life. I mean, and like I said, you can speak death to people. Once you put it out there, you can't receive it back. It's spirit. So we walk in spirit and in truth, whether we want to or whether we don't. Spirit is positive or negative. So we either walk in positivity or we walk in negativity. You know, misery loves company. Once you put it out there, you got to deal with it. There ain't nothing else you can do about it. So putting, you know, having God watch your mouth. That's a good prayer right there. That's David. Have him watch your mouth. Have him guard your tongue, guard your heart. Because, you know, I know that's one scripture we don't have in here. But everybody know out of the mouth, the heart speaks. So whatever we speaking out of our mouth, that's what's in our heart. And, you know, I know we got the one about the filing. Say, keep the door on my lips. I mean, just don't say and spew anything. I mean, gossip, you know, that's like got all the seven deadly sins in it. That's why God hate gossip. It's got the seven deadly. I mean, you don't know defaming the character of anybody, gossip. And especially if you're going off of something that you, you heard from somebody else and they didn't get all the information. You know, they wasn't credible. They didn't sit there and learn everything. So you just gossiping. You just spreading this stuff right along with them. And then when it finally comes around, when the truth shows up, because the truth will show up. Who is the truth? Jesus was the truth. The spirit of the truth. Jesus, the spirit of the Lord is the truth. When he show up and the truth come out, then you be looking crazy like the person that put it out there in the first place. And maybe they didn't do it intentionally. Maybe some people just listened to respond. And they didn't hear the whole story. So they put out what bits and pieces they heard. You know the grapevine. You know, by the time it get over there to Miss Edna, what I told you would be totally different. So we got to watch our mouth. We got to make sure 
that we honor, that we, you know, take inventory of what comes out of our lips. Let's go to Jeremiah 1 and 9. Our mouth is very powerful. Then the Lord put forth his hand, and the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. That's Jeremiah, the weeping prophet. Remember, Jeremiah was supposed to go tell the elders, you know, to give them the words and instruction of the Lord. And, and Jeremiah looked at God and said, yeah, they older than me. They're going to look at me like something wrong with me. They're not going to listen to me. And that's why God put his words in his mouth. Yeah. So we are we speaking our own words or are we speaking the words that God has given us? Are we in our word, in our Bible, to where we are, the, his word is written on our heart? So that we can, when we go out and about, we speak in God's word. You know, he can speak to us, go say this to this person. Or are we studying to show our own self-approval? You don't never know what you're studying that scripture for. You might run into somebody at Walmart that need that word. So are we doing that? You know, do we have God's word in our mouth all the time? Or are we just idle time, idle mind, sitting up watching whatever on TV? And, you know, we got all empire, whatever, coming out of our mouth. You know, soap operas, whatever. We got to make sure that we have God in our mouth in order to be effective. Only God's word is going to reign. Only God's word, you know, is going to cut. It's sovereign. Let's go, to, let's go on over to the uh, New Testament. Matthew 15 and 11. That's what I was talking about earlier, the one that defiled them. What you put in your mouth, don't defile it. You can put in all the lobster, the shrimp, the steak, the catfish. You can put whatever you want in your mouth, and it ain't going to defile you. It's what comes out of your mouth, the spirit, what you say to other people. You know, life and death is in the power of the tongue. You can speak life to somebody, or you can speak death to somebody. You can speak corruption. You ever seen somebody, they say, she's a beautiful woman, all good, glamour, dressed up, fashionable, makeup, all that kind of stuff. But the moment she opened her mouth, there are people we know like that. They can dress the outside up really good. But when they open their mouth, you don't want to hear nothing that they got to say. I seen some beautiful women. I ain't gonna say where they was because they'll say that I'm stereotyping. But I seen some beautiful women, fashionably dressed, hair done, just look like runway models, supposed to be out there. But they was the way they talk. You, they, you, they can't communicate with nobody. They couldn't get a job if they wanted to. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. What defiles you is what comes out of you. Cause like I said, remember before I say, out of the mouth the heart speaks. So whatever's on your heart is what's going to come out. If you love people, it's going to come out. If you hate, jealous, envious, wicked, you know, all the works of the flesh against people, corrupt communication, that's what's going to come out. I think that's the scripture we got in here too. But, um, yeah, so make sure that um, we putting good stuff in and make sure we got good stuff coming out of our mouth. Compliments, positivity, encouragement. You know, not don't let's not beat people down when they going through stuff. You know, I could go through and talk all kind of circles around people, you know, in the situation. But is it going to change the fact that we still got to go through the situation? We just got to go through. I remember that song on the they say on the cross. He he got up there and he never said a mumbling word. That's not saying that he didn't say anything because he did say it. He said in Hebrew. Lord, why have thou forsaken me? It's Eloi, 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 Lama Sabachthani. I forget how it is. But it means, Lord, Lord, why have thou forsaken me when he was on the cross? That's when the Holy Spirit left him. And he was up there by himself, flesh and all, feeling all that pain. So the comforter left him. That's why he said that. So it's not saying that, you know, he didn't say anything. He screamed out in pain. But what he says is that he never said a mumbling word. He didn't complain while he was up there going through. Not one complaint. He asked for, he said, I thirst. He said a few things, but not one of them was a complaint. 
He did what Job should have done. They say the the faith, this what do you call it, the faith is Job or whatever. Job wasn't all that. Job was complaining. Job was wishing he was dead. Job was doing all that, but Job was a just man. God said, have you tried my servant Job? But Job had all manner of evil coming out of his mouth, and God had to tell him, he had to check him. He said, where was you at when I hung the stars in the sky? What was you doing? You know, so, but Jesus, he did it all. He didn't, he didn't say a mumbling word. He didn't say nothing negative. Out of all that they was doing to him, can we do that? Are we there yet? No. <laughs> At least she honest. <laughs> Woo. Yeah. Right. But you know, that's the way to get your blessing quicker is when you are going through something. Instead of saying corrupt words, I think that, yeah, that one is said about corrupt communication. As long as you got positivity and praise and glory to God coming out of your mouth, God say you passing the test. You making it. So, but if you, the moment you start complaining and whining and falling out like a toddler, you going to go around that mountain again. You know, it just makes it longer. He said, you going to praise me. He said, every knee shall bow and every tongue must confess. So that, that means here on earth, we got to glorify God. If we want the blessings of God, if we want the favor of God, we got to sound like God. We can't sound like the enemy and give him glory. Y'all know when we complain and that's who we give him glory is the enemy. He's sitting back. Look at that. She, 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 she going to curse you in a minute. She, she ain't going to want nothing to do with you. She just, just wait. She, she going to curse. It's all, I hear it coming almost. And if God laid, you know, Job, he let the, the enemy come to him and test him. He asked him, say, have you tested my servant Job? You know why? Because he knew Job could do it. So if you got all manner of adversity, evil coming against you, and you are being tried in your faith for something, that means God already knows you can pass the test. You got to believe it. So as long as you praise in him, and you know, he say when, you know, praises go up, blessings come down. That ain't what the words say. The words say, I, he inhabits the praises of his people. So if you praising him while he going through, you creating a seat for him. So while you going through, God will come down and see about you and sit a seat in what you going through. And where the presence of God is, that can't stand. It's got to lead. So it's very important. That's how we walk in spirit and truth. What we say when we going through. We got to speak God. But that's where our faith is shown that by how we speak. Do we whine and complain? We got to speak God. We got to continually speak God's word. We got to, we, the victory is going to be mine. You know, we still got to keep our minds stayed on him. We can't just give the enemy, you know, ain't no lukewarm back and forth or whatever. We got to continually give God glory, give God praise. And before you know it, you open up your eyes, it's gone. You be like, I was just dealing with something. It's done before you know it or whatever. So yeah, you pray. That's, that's what it is. Praise your way through. You know, God, he allows, sometimes he gets a little attention seeking, I say. You know, he want a little attention. So he allow you to go through something. So while you going through, if you praising him, he say, that's my daughter there. Go on to give her this. You know, that's my daughter. Go on to give But as soon as you start complaining and whining, he sit back and wait till you put your big girl patties on. That's what he sit back and wait for. Because, you know, if you've been in your word, you've been raised up to do what you're supposed to do. Let's go to... Y'all know John 1 and 1. She was just praying it. Pastor Bill, what was Matthew? Matthew 15 and 11. Okay. All right. Yeah. What comes out your mouth defiles you. Not what goes in. Let's go to Matthew, uh, John 1 and 1. You were just praying it. In the beginning. Yep. The word, and the word was with God and the word was God. Uh -huh. In the beginning was the word. We always go to the word first. Yes. In anything we do, go to the word first. Don't go to our flesh. Don't lean to our own understanding because we'll mess it up every time. We got to go be in his righteousness, not our own righteousness, because our own righteousness is as a filthy rags. So we go to him first. Go to the word first. We, we'll be okay. We'll be better for it. And the word was with God. That means the word, that's the spirit of God. That's the presence of the Holy Ghost. The presence of the Holy Ghost is the word of God. And then the word of God was made flesh. 
The word became God. So if you in your Bible reading the word and Jesus is the example, ain't he telling you that you can be made, the, made, the word made flesh in you? It's got to be written on your heart. That means you got to be in your word. To the, any situation come up, the Holy Spirit can bring it back to your remembrance and speak it to you and say, you know, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Any situation that come up, the Holy Spirit can bring something back to your remembrance. He can't bring it back to your remembrance if you hadn't first looked at it. If you hadn't been there at first, um, I think that's in Romans, the one living sacrifice, you know, re remembrance or something, you know, be re oh, the renewing of our mind. Yeah, the renewing of our mind. If we are in our word when we need it, it's the renewing of our mind. It's treat teaching our mind differently because, you know, we were born in sin, yes. shaped by iniquity. Mm -hmm. So, but when we got born again, God said we are a new creation in him. That means we're no longer sinners. We were born in sin, but we are new creation. How can you can't be a sinner and a new creation at the same time? That's why a lot of people run around here. Well, God know my heart. You know, I'm a sinner saved by grace. Yes, but if you are a disciple, if you are in His Word, you are born again. You are a new cre creation. You are a new creature in Christ. If you in Christ, you can't be a sinner and in Christ at the same time. You are in Him. You are redeemed. You can't be redeemed and be a sinner at the same time. It's your mindset. It's how you think. You got to, that's where your power is, is you got to know who you are in God. You got to know the word and, and study the word. And you know, you got to apply that word to your life. Remember, I always say knowledge is the word. Application. Knowledge and application is wisdom. That's your wisdom. If you if you have a set of keys and you don't know what they go to, how are they going to be beneficial or effective to you? You just hold around with keys in your hand. You don't know what they go to. You don't know what they do. You don't know nothing. But if you know what the key go to and you apply that key, then you can go somewhere. You can travel. You can get somewhere or whatever. So let's not just read the word just because we're trying to, you know, make it into heaven. Just read. Oh, Lord, I read a few scriptures. You know, if you don't write it on your heart and apply it to your life, he's going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. You can read the word all day long, but you got to apply it to your life. you got to write it on your heart. It's got to change you. It's got to make a difference in your life. Let's go to John 16, 13. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come? He will guide you into all truth, but he shall not speak of himself. That shall he teach, and he will, and he will show you things to come. <coughs> Spirit of truth, Holy Spirit. We talking about God, the Holy God, Holy Spirit. When He shows up, He gonna guide you in all truth. That's when you receive Him. You are born again. You in your Word. You seeking Him. He going to show up and guide you in all truth. And he ain't going to speak of himself. You know why? Because he going to use your vessel to glorify him, to speak of him. If he ain't using your vessel to glorify him, what are we doing? God don't speak of himself. He, use, he works through these hands. Yes. Love is the spirit. And as I love on you, that's glorifying God. That's how, that, that's how he speaks. It's through your, our actions, through loving one another, forgiveness, all that. He speaks through our behavior. You know, I always say our behavior represents our heart. You know, that shows what our heart, our mouth can lie all day long, but our heart can't. You know, we can try to act like until we get tripped up. But what's in your heart is in your heart. You really can't change the heart of man overnight. It takes days to change a habit. That's the one about the heart is deceitful. That's right. That's right. So... We got to make sure that we are walking and use, letting, allowing God, allowing the Holy Spirit to use our vessel to glorify him. How is anybody in the world going to know that there is a God if we don't show him? They ain't sitting up at night watching Daystar, whatever them uh, TV evangelist TV shows and stuff on. And half of them on there, they just doing it for the money. They ain't got the real God anyway. And they, most of them looking at it and, you know, it's mocking us. You know, it's mocking God. You know, we ain't supposed to be acting and doing half the things that them people doing on there. So if we don't walk before people and, and act like Christ, 
How they going to know Christ? How they going to have a mind to want to come over to our side to, you know, ask about our God? You know, we're living testimonies, which means evangelism is not, you know, trying to ask somebody to come to church. Evangelism is in walking, in being evangelist, the lifestyle, living, you know, as a, a child of God. What does a child of God look like to somebody through you? That's what I'm saying. Are we... Are we mindful of what uh, conversations we having and with people? We don't know who's looking at us. I was talking at church on Sunday. Um, there was a young man. I watched him grow up. He didn't know how to play the drums really well. But as I came back, because y'all know I left the church, I come back. You know, I went to go do that other church. And now I'm back at this church. And since I walked in church Sunday, he was, t he was keeping up with the best of the best, Dr. Cheryl. He was playing them drums. You don't never know who's looking at you. So are we walking in a way that somebody can look at you and say, that's a woman of God. That's, that's somebody that believes in God. Because trust and believe, when they look at you and they're going through something and that they cannot handle, they cannot explain, they're going to remember you and they're going to come to you and ask you, how would you do this? How would you handle this? Here we go. <laughs> so we're not walking for us. We're walking for him. That's why I say our mouth, our conversation, our communication, 20%, the 80% is our body language, our attitude, our behavior. So what is coming out of our mouth? Do they see us cussing out people? Do they see me running down the street cussing people off that and cut me off? Not so much anymore. <laughs> I drive with a pace. I drive slow. <laughs> but do they? If they look at us, can they see Christ on us? Can they see Christ in us, coming through us? So, and they hear Christ by what the words, what we say. Let's go to uh, this. This scripture, I'm talking, Ephesians four twenty nine. <clears throat> Corrupt communication. What is corrupt communication? Give me some examples of corrupt communication. Yeah. Right. Back and forth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just stop it right there. Cease it right there. Corrupt communication, gossip, anything that's not glorifying God, ain't edifying you or the person, or anything. It's just corrupt. It's corruption. That is giving, that's glorifying the enemy. Do we realize that? While we are corrupt, we're tearing somebody else down, defaming their character or whatever. Now, testifying about something is different. You testify about somebody, you know, something that happened to you or whatever. That's to, in a teaching way to, um, you know, like bullies will, won't stop bullying until you start tell, saying they bullying or whatever, you know, like awareness or whatever. But you don't go and just, um, like all the stuff that's coming out on social media about uh, the uh, P. Diddy and all that, that's bringing awareness to what's going on in the music industry or whatever. If it wasn't no truth behind it, or they were just sitting there doing it, you know, trying to defame his character, no truth or no credibility behind it, that'd be different. But when you bring somebody to awareness of something because you're trying to keep somebody else from going through the same hurt that you've been through, that's different. But just to sit up and defame somebody's character or gossip about them because you jealous or envious of what they have or you don't like them. You know, some people don't like me just because of the smile on my face. Because regardless, I'm going to smile. You know, it's hard some days going through, but I try not to look like what I'm going through. But when I do look like what I'm going through, that's because, you know, I'm letting somebody know I ain't perfect. I'm going through. And I testify about it. But at the same time, I'm not just going to tell you the good and never tell you the bad. Because then you're going to think that I'm so untouchable. I'm so unreachable. 
or whatever. I don't never have a bad day in my life. But I'm, I'm here to tell you, I'm just as human as you are. So we don't try to look like the victim or whatever I call it. That's what it makes me feel like. But we try to edify somebody else. Say, look, just because I got this title, it don't mean nothing. The title is just a title. That's what I'm saying. I got this new title or whatever. That title is good, but that title ain't going to pay my bills. I need to see when it's going to pay my bills. <laughs> when it's going, you know, um, you know, when you're going through something, normally there's a promotion involved. You just got to, you know, see the end or whatever. So I didn't got promoted, but I'm waiting for the, you know, the, where my bills and stuff get called up now. So I'm just still praying to God because I can get promoted and you know, if something happened or whatever, and maybe, you know, it don't get, and I got to go look for another job or whatever. But what I'm saying is don't settle just for that. See it all the way through. See, some people get happy and they just go do it. They and forget everything about it. Next thing you know, something happens and then they rock bottom. They depress or whatever. No, I see it all the way through. But like I say, we need to learn to walk with people. And while we're walking with people, we don't want to tear them down. We don't want to, cause well, you didn't do this and I can't do this. And, you know, you don't do that when you walk with somebody. You edify them. Yeah, I'm going to bring it to your attention that I, I know or whatever. But when we had that conversation and I know your side and you know my side and we can come to common ground in agreement that you're doing all that you can and I'm doing all that I can, we can walk together. But we, if I come to agreement that you just using me or I'm just using you, that's, who's that edifying or benefiting? So you got to have communication. You got to be able to talk civilly, you know, like to, you know, spirit bears witness. You got to have good communication come out your mouth. Um, minister grace unto the hearers. Yeah, like I say, minister grace. You know, we hear, you know, the heart of a person. That's what we minister to is the heart. What's on our heart? We're not just saying stuff just to be saying stuff. We speak from the heart. We ain't just out here blurting stuff just to tear people down. It comes from the heart. Make sure it comes from the heart. Anything we give, he say, be a cheerful giver. We give from the heart. He say, judge not lest ye be judged. Remember that scripture, my, one of my favorite ones that say, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Shall men give unto your bosom. They always talk about prosperity and money. But a few scriptures up, it's talking about your heart. If you don't give it from your heart, God don't want it. You can give silver and gold all day long. He don't want that. He wants your heart. That's what he wants. Let's go to um, Hebrews 4 and 12. We may not do the whole chapter of James. This, we got like 15, 18 minutes. But the word of God is quick and powerful and stronger than any two-edged sword. Piercing even unto the dividing Yes, be careful what you say because it can cut somebody deep. We learn that with the children. You know, the parents said, you ain't never going to be nothing. You ain't never going to, you don't know how deep that cut that child. And then when that child's laying around doing nothing, not believing in they self playing PlayStation all day, you want them to get up and go get a job or whatever. Well, you done beat him all down all his life. Talking about he wasn't never going to be nothing. So why he got to get up and go? Right. I'm just going to sit here while you take care of me all the time. <laughs> my kids know I ain't taking care of no 40, 50 year old child on my couch. They got to get up and go to get, be ready so they can take care of me if need be. And I pray it every day that my kids don't have to take care of me because I know I'm going to catch it. <laughs> I'm going to catch it. But uh, like I say, it's quick. We got to be careful what we say, even with the word. You know, giving somebody the word in the wrong season can cut them up and turn them away from God. We don't want to do that. That's why I always, you know, I always take a pause and I'm always listening to God before I say something. Because if I say something and... I, you know, like it's, that's an abomination at the wrong time. That person may be like Judas and go home and kill himself. We got to be careful. That's how powerful your tongue is. That's it, it, that little member, as the Bible calls it. That's how powerful it is. Even speaking to yourself, 
You got to be careful what you're saying to yourself. That negative self-talk, that's what you believe in about yourself. And you'll speak your own self into depression. You got to be careful. Let's go on. We're just going to do, um, yeah, because we ain't got that time for the other one. Let's do uh, James 3, 5 through 6. 5 and 6. James 3, 5 and 6. Even so, the tongue is a willing it's a little member. I was just talking about that. And it boasts a whole bunch of great things. It can exaggerate. It can build, you know, big empires or whatever in the mouth. Yeah, it was uh, James 3, verses 5 and 6. James 3, 5 and 6. Mm-hmm. Your, your tongue can talk yourself into stuff that you can't get your stuff out of. It's a small member, but it can cut up some stuff. It can do some big damage. Yes. And even before that, in uh, verse, um, what is it? Where is it at? That's why I wanted to read the whole chapter. Because James, you all know my, James, my man. Um, before that, it talks about the helm of a ship. Y'all know them big old ships? Big old long Titanic looking things? But the helm is the steering wheel or whatever. The, the helm and the rudder or whatever. It's a small thing. You just turn that little thing and it moves that little rudder to move that big old ship. You don't need no whole big old steering wheel to move that, you know. So your tongue, it, it even said it in here. It messes up your whole body. What comes out your mouth affects your whole body. Whatever you're in every day, whatever you're going through, how you address it, how you speak to it, it's going to affect your whole body. I say y'all can have what you say all the time. If you're going through something, praise your way out. That'll make it easier for you. It's just praise your way out. Because if you're talking like hell, you might end up in hell. Because you just keep, you know, negative, negative. That ain't glorifying nobody but the, the devil, the enemy. That's right. Let's move on down to verse 8. That's right. You can't tame it. No man. Scripture say that. We say we can tame our tongue. We can bridle our tongue. That's another part in James where it talks about the, the thing, the, the bridle or whatever that you put in a horse's mouth. The bits or whatever you put in a horse's mouth, that big old beautiful stallion can be controlled by just that, by his mouth. Turn his neck or whatever, that's, that's, that's how important your mouth is. It controls the rest of your whole body. That's a, a horse. So just think in the spirit, this is the same thing. We can't tame our tongue. We got to stay in the word. Because to tame it means we, we um, overcome it. But as long as we in the word and speaking the word of God, you know, good communication, glorifying him, we're okay. But the moment we slip, you know, we can't tame it. We got to keep going. Let's go. The last scripture we're going to go to is James. Let's go down to verse 10. Out of the same mouth proceeded blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not to proceed. That's what we're I know there's another scripture to say, you can't have oil and something come out at the same thing. But I'm saying, you can't bless somebody and then curse them out out of the same mouth. What, who, I mean, what they going to listen to? You know, they're not going to look at you. If you always run around cussing up and down a storm, who going to listen to you? Who going to see that you, have, you ain't got no peace in your spirit? You can get up there in the pulpit and preach mel mel melodious all you want to. But they looking at you how you act in the world. How's your life in the world? Are you, you know, going through all kinds of you sitting there doing things you ain't got no business doing? Can the comforter com keep you? 
The same comforter that you preaching to everybody else, telling everybody else, testifying to everybody else. You know, in Revelation, they say we are one by our testimonies. The same testimony that you preaching to everybody else, can that testimony keep you? It's about our mouth. It's what's coming out of our mouth. We can say what we want to say, but if it's not looking like it's supposed to in our body, in our flesh, who gonna, we gonna, what's that called? Hypocrite. Who gonna listen to us? Even our children know, you know, we can tell them one thing, don't do as I say, but say as I do. Well, don't do as I, how have it go? I can't even say it. Yeah, that's it. So we telling them one, don't do one thing while we sitting over here doing it. They ain't gonna listen to us. The world is the same way. So we got to make sure that we, if we're going to bless people, we speak blessings. If we're going to curse people, then we speak cursings. He say, in between, that's lukewarm. You either be hot or cold, one or the other. You know, people can respect you and have integrity if you are one way or the other. That straddling the fence, ain't nobody got no respect for that. They're not going to listen to that. So... And he said these things ought not to be ought not so to be. So we can't we can't speak blessings to somebody and then well we can't curse somebody out and then turn around the next day try to bless them. They're gonna look at you like something wrong with you. Like you was just cut look at the the children, the parents. Like I wanna just use this as an example. Alcoholic parents, you know, that have alcoholism, you know, they're okay and they treat their children but once they get full of alcohol and they always nah, 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 at the kid you know all the time or whatever but when they ain't got no booze in them they want to love on them and kiss on them they, that child looking at me like I don't want nothing to do with you that's like Dr. Jekyll Mr. Hyde right. we don't know so we the same way in the spirit though you know if we they see us cutting up on the corner or whatever but we holding trying to hold up holy hands in church on Sunday who going to listen to us? So our mouth, people, faith come by hearing first and hearing by the word of God. People going to hear what, hear you before they see you. They going to hear you. They going to listen to what's coming out your mouth. But if they don't see the evidence in your flesh, you're going to turn them away. So we got to make sure that we're walking the walk that we preach about, that we're talking about. All right, that's our last scripture. Somebody pray us out. I think we're going to talk about self-righteousness next week. You know, those that got the power of the Holy Ghost in them, they so self-righteous, they don't know when, when the Holy Ghost done sat down and they, they self-righteous, they in their own flesh. So we're going to talk about self-righteousness next week, and that might take a couple of weeks right there. Yeah, self-righteousness, that's a sin that uh -uh. we're going to go through. You know, the prodigal son, the one that was in the house, that was his sin, the self-righteousness. All right, somebody pray us out. Amen, amen. I'm on my way to my next Bible study. <laughs>